Right. So, you know, when, when the kidneys don't work well, uh, there are a lot of uh, abnormal lab values that result, right? Anything ranging from the potassium level going up to the phosphorus level going up. Um, you know, the, the kidneys produce a, a hormone that uh, maintains a normal hemoglobin level. So patients become anemic. Uh, when they have chronic kidney disease. So a lot of medications that we give to patients with kidney disease sort of address some of the complications, right, associated with kidney disease. So frequently there are phosphate binders, there are um, potassium lowering agents, uh, there's vitamin D, there's iron. Uh, some folks require injectable agents to maintain a normal hemoglobin. Um, and some folks require, um, you know, bicarb supplementation, right, uh, to um, decrease the blood acidity that we know can uh, worsen the progression of kidney disease. I think more recently, um, as uh, my colleagues have mentioned, uh, newer classes of medications, uh, which we'll talk about, uh, SG2 inhibitors and others, uh, developed for diabetes treatment uh, have shown a lot of benefit, not just for um, you know, blood glucose lowering, but, but cardiovascular benefit and uh, decreased progression of kidney disease. Um, there are some rare kidney disorders like um, you know, glomerular disease, focal sclerosis, IG nephropathy, where we give specialized treatment um, and polycystic kidney disease is another uh, big bucket in, in the chronic kidney disease spectrum where there's no uh, available treatment to, to slow progression. But overall, besides the complication management, uh, diabetes and hypertension are sort of the lion's share of the causes of chronic kidney disease. So we do focus a lot with our endocrinology and cardiology colleagues and primary care in ensuring that uh, blood sugar and, and the cardiovascular parameters are, are well controlled. 